Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, today we're back on the doors for that 1950 Chevy truck, the five window. We're going to be working on the interior door panels, getting those some light sanding and the jams as well, and just double checking the doors inside and out to make sure they're ready. And then we'll spray a seal coat of polyester primer. We'll be reducing that down to have it lay out a little flatter and go down a little thinner. And then that'll move those on that much closer to color and clear. We'll just have some final sanding to do and then, uh, then we'll be able to spray these things. Okay, as you see, I've got the doors flipped over. We're going to be doing uh, work on the inner door panel here and on the jams today. And to do that, I've got, you know, some 220, just a little small piece folded over. But I like to use these uh, foam sanding blocks. Now, this one's 220. It's pretty worn out. But I really don't use it for sanding. I use, uh, use it for a block. And it's really good for getting around... We've got a uh, kind of a con uh, cave area here, and these have a little bit of a roll to them. And then, you know, some odd shapes and get down in the grooves. So these sh the shape of these things really come in handy. Plus, they're a little bit flexible, so you can wrap the sandpaper around it. And I can push and get down inside some of these grooves and smooth a lot of this out. Now, I've already filled, uh, you know, some dents and some spot welds and taken care of some, you know, pretty bad areas. I'm not going to treat these like the exterior. They're not going to be blocked out. I'm not going to try to make them perfect. That's the interior cab. Uh, now, it, it is going to be painted blue. I thought he wanted it black, but he was here yesterday. The owner was here yesterday, and I was asking where he wants to cut off the black, and he informed me that he wanted the panels blue. So, uh, so when we go to spray, we'll be spraying blue on the inside and outside. So, uh, but the prep is going to be to a point where it's nice and smooth, not perfect. So let's, uh, let's just jump into sanding here. We've got these grooves to take care of. We want to go over the jams uh, lightly to make sure they're all nice and smoothed out. And then when we spray the, the seal coat of uh, primer on here, then all we have to do is some really fine sanding just to get it prepped for color and clear. So let me jump in here and start sanding. I'm not going to bore you with a lot of that. Well, I'm going to go over it real quick, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the areas and how to address them. Okay, as you guys recall, when we stripped all the paint off the inside of these uh, with a wire wheel and 80 grit, I mean, we, uh, we beat on it pretty good. Uh, you know, the wire wheel left some marks, the 80 grit definitely left some uh, sand scratches. So what we're doing right now is we are sanding this primer to take out all those sand scratches. And uh, I don't know if you guys recall, but there's some gouges and, uh, you know, just deep scratches in the steel from this thing being that old. Uh, so what we're doing with this primer is removing all the, so we're, I'm sanding down until I don't see anything showing, you know, so it all looks good. Now I still need to sand the grooves and that's where this foam pad is really going to come in handy. So if I look at this pad and I look at this groove and I hold it down in there, if I push on it like that on this little, uh, angle right here, whatever that is, um, it actually fits in there pretty good. So if I wrap the sandpaper like this, and then I push down inside there, I'm able to sand down inside there and hit the bottom and hit the sides. Now, uh, you see right away, I've already exposed the side. And that's not a big deal because, but you can see how it's hit and miss, hit and miss, hit and miss, right? So that means that primer is filling in between there. And if, I, if, I'm, if it's just taking too much and it's not hitting the bottom, then I can switch over to the edge here, the more pointy edge, and I can roll that over right here, and then just simply sand like that. So these blocks come in really handy, There's a because it rolls off this way, then it's got a shallow where it comes out, so I can just get down inside there and sand the bottom of those grooves out. Because you'll notice on, if you look closely on a lot of paint jobs, you'll notice the hard to reach stuff uh, is where you'll see the imperfections, you know, so uh, if you're shooting for perfection, then, you know, you really got to take, uh, take the, the little hard to reach areas very seriously and spend a lot of time in them. And then these flat areas, I mean, they, they're easy compared to that. So now I've hit down in here and I've got a little 
high spot that showed up there. There's uh, some stuff that spot welded on the inside of here. And when they spot welded, it kind of pulled the sheet metal a little bit. We're not trying to fix that. We're just going to get this all smoothed out the best we can. So I'm going to just keep on sanding these grooves now. And then we'll get these prepped. And then when we get uh, the ceiling primer on here, then we're not trying to flatten any of this out. We're just trying to sand it smooth, get the primer nice and smooth to the four 600 grit uh, finish. So when the, the color goes on, it lays down nice and flat. And then we put the clear on, it's going to be great. So I'm going to finish sanding this up and I'll bring you back. Okay, uh, I'm really happy the way it's looking. I've got a little bit more sanding to do. I got a few spots I can see here. So I got a bright light shining on down on it. You can kind of get lost on this gray where you'll miss something. Uh, you can take it outside into the sun too. That works really well. The sunlight is your best uh, friend in doing this kind of stuff. So I'll probably lug them out there and take a look at them in the sun too before we uh, decide that they're good enough. So right here we've got a high spot. Now there's a brace that's spot welded on right here and that brace goes all the way to the exterior skin. So if I start banging away trying to uh, get that high spot out or you get this perfect, chances are I'm going to distort the exterior skin. So you have to be very careful. Make sure you know, put your hand in there, feel around, figure out why that's, it is the way it is before you start trying to make a repair on the inside or outside. So uh, this one, it's going to just be left alone. The spot welds here, they're a little lumpy, uh, and I'm, I'm trying not to fill those again, but I probably will. I just checked the other door, and I could probably put a little glazing in here and sweeten these up, and I probably will because that's just what I do. I go too far. But uh, all in all, the rest of it looks good. We've got a couple little uh, low spots right here that I may glaze in as well just because I want these these ribs here to look really nice. Now they may go up and down a little bit, but I want them to be, you know, generally nice and smooth and flat-ish. So all in all, these look pretty good. Uh, we're going to move over and, and take a look at the jams now and see what we can do to help sweeten those up so when the doors are open or you're cleaning or whatever, um, they look really good. Okay, as you guys recall, we came through with a little uh, Rolock with some 80 grid on it, I think it was, and we kind of took care of the spot welds and anything that was sticking out. So as you can see now, just with one little light coat of primer on it, how much better these jams look. Now, this is the latch side. This is the one you see the most. But you can tell, just look how nice this looks already. And then we're going to go ahead and sand this smooth and take care of some of these imperfections. There's some stamping lines and stuff like that. We're not going to take those out. But we're going to go ahead and get this sanded up so it looks really nice. And then we can take care of this lip right here and try to smooth some of this out. We had some rust down in here we took care of. And of course we took care of the, the rust down here. So we want to make sure this smooths out really nice. Not perfect, but smooth uh, equates to uh, shiny. So the smoother things are, the shinier they look. So always kind of keep that in mind. So let's, uh, let's sand on this real quick and see how we can make it look. Okay, now just with a few minutes of sanding, I don't know what I was in that thing, five minutes, six minutes, this jam now looks just way better than it did before. So look, you know, uh, you guys can't feel that. I can feel the undulations from it being stamped and stuff like that, but it is smooth. So, and that's going to equate down to a really nice looking finish when we're done. And these are the little things you can do that make your, your job, your project, that much nicer and it's not just when it's done it's when you're washing it when you're taking care of it uh you know the whole thing because there's no sharp edges in here you're not going to cut yourself when you're cleaning uh when you're sanding uh, you don't have that piece of metal always sticking through because it's a sharp edge so as just go through and just kind of clean up those areas beforehand before you get into prime and it'll make your life that much easier down the road. So I've got a little bit more sanding to do I want to do down inside here. This Where this uh, sheet metal bends over, it's kind of got a little convex in there. So I want to get a little more sanding in there and make that nicer. I can feel a few spots I don't like. But other than that, this is really getting close. Now I'll go through with the uh, scotch Brite pad and we'll get all these holes real good and get those scuffed down inside there. You always want to make sure you scuff everything before you spray anything over the top. I mean anything primer, sealers, everything, 
you need to make sure everything is scuffed so it gets a mechanical bond as well as a chemical bond. So I'm going to go through and get this and I will use a scotch Bright pad down inside this groove where this kind of pinch weld is right here because I can't get sandpaper down in there and I want to make sure I jam that scotch Bright pad in there and really scrub around in there and make sure it's scuffed really good. So I'm going to do a little more sanding on this and then we're going to take a look and see what else needs to be done. Okay, I did what I said I wasn't going to do or didn't want to do. Now, these blocked out really nice. I got a block on them. They're not perfect, but uh, they're smooth-ish. So, and I had a little low spot here I didn't like since I had a glazing putty mixed up. Another spot here that I had filled, but I didn't do a good enough job. And then a couple over here. This one was more pronounced. I didn't like it at all. That one sanded out real nice. So, we'll get some more primer on that. It'll be fine. And then this one right here was another one of those dents that I don't think, maybe uh, I filled it and then I, when I removed the paint, the black paint around it, I must have cut a little deep. And then we had a couple of little, there was a chip here and a little bad spot there I didn't like. But all in all, that's it. And it is uh, lunchtime. So I'm going to let this stuff set up. I'm going to go eat some lunch and we'll come back and we'll get these blocked out, uh, these little spots sanded out. And we'll finish up these doors and get some uh, primer back on them. Okay, I had a good lunch. I uh, got these glazed. I already sanded the ones over here. As you can see, uh, my little shop helper, he wonders why I don't want to let him in the house after he's been hanging around the shop. He's laying in a pile of primer dust right now. And he doesn't like to get blown off with air hose, so we have to do something about that, that's for sure. So these over here, uh, they need to be uh, sanded, and I'm going to use a really small block uh, so I don't end up scratching. So I've just got this little block with some worn out 80. And this is my fault. I should have done a better job uh, prepping before I got any primer on it. But I had hit the spots I wanted. Then we kind of re-sanded and I kind of screwed up some of these. These over here I didn't see. This one uh, wasn't as bad as I thought it was and it turned out it needed more filling. The rest all sanded out fine. So it was just this one here and a couple over there. So I'm just going to sand these real quick. It shouldn't be that big a deal. I'll try to keep my sand scratches small. And then when we go to primer them again with the final seal coat, I'll just double coat all these little spots to make sure all the sand scratches come out. But I'm just going to do that real quick. And then I'll bring you back. Okay, we got them blocked out, uh, these little spots on all of them. I'll, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, the two little tiny ones over here. Uh, there's something I haven't covered before. Now I blocked these with some 80, then some 120, and now I'll hit them with the 220 just to kind of smooth the area a little bit to help that primer uh, cover all the sand scratches. Now most uh, polyester primers, heavy high build primers, will take care of an 80 grit sand scratch no problem, but you want to kind of help yourself along. Now uh, when you're sanding like on a flat surface like this, a hood, or just like I'm doing here, always blow off in between both all the all your grit so i'm hitting this with 80 grit and then if i just came back at it with 120 or 220 and i didn't blow that off that old grit away uh, it falls off the sandpaper as you're sanding so if you don't blow that away good you could pick it up and just you end up pushing that little miniature 80 grit rock around and you're trying to sand to 220 where well, you're just putting 80 grit scratches all over this thing and you're not accomplishing what you want so just blow them off real quick obviously if it's on the side of a fender you just run your hand over it it'll fall away but if it's on a flat surface always try to blow it clean and then uh, move to your next grit and that'll save you some headache down the road wondering you know where do where do all those scratches come from when i was sanding with something finer so i'm just going to hit this with some 220 real quick all of them and then uh, we're going to go around and make sure I've got everything. We're going to hang these things up and get some, uh, uh, get some polyester primer on them as just a seal coat. Okay, we got them hung up, ready to spray. And I've gone through with some sandpaper and just triple checked everything, make sure everything was sanded well. Now I'm just going to take a little chunk of Scotch-Brite and I'm going to go and get all along you, these seams where they bend over, all the little nooks and crannies, the screw holes and everything. And I'm just going to jam this down inside there and I'll make sure everything gets scuffed. And it's just a good practice because there's just places the scotch pipe will go that the sandpaper won't. You can just kind of fold it up and jam it down inside those grooves and uh, get, get it nice and scuffed down in there. And always treat whenever you're spraying you just treat it like, uh, you know, you wouldn't spray color without sanding well. You don't want to spray primer or sealer or anything else without sanding well or scuffing. So I'm just going to go through and do this real quick. 
And then uh, we'll move over to the bench and mix up some uh, primer. We're going to reduce it down to thin it so it lays down a little bit thinner and flatter. And then that way when we sand it with the 4 and 600, it sands really easy and uh, these things will be ready for color and clear. Okay, I poured off some uh, polyester primer. This happens to be Evercoat's uh, Feather Fill G2, whatever that means. We're going to go ahead and reduce this down a little bit. This stuff is a little bit thinner than the PCL I usually use, but um, the company that bought them out seems to have discontinued it. So uh, the instructions say no more than 10% re uh, reduction. Um, I don't even like to go even anywhere close to that. So I go, you know, 3 to 5% and that's about it. So I'm going to guesstimate about 3%, 5% into here of acetone. And then we're going to stir that up a little bit and see how it looks. And that looks like it's going to be good right there. So by reducing it, it's, uh, it's kind of reducing the body, the viscosity of it, so it atomizes better out of the gun and lays down a much smoother, tight film on there, uh, you know, closer to like a top coat. And, and what that does is when you're doing like a sealer like I am, I'm not going to be sanding it with 220 or anything. I'll be planning on sanding this with uh, probably 320 just lightly to take some of the orange peel off and then jump up to 600 or go 400, 600. And I'd like to do these outside wet and dry if, if possible if the weather uh, cooperates. Let me get some hardener in this and then we'll load the gun and we'll start spraying. So this particular uh, polyester resin wants 7.5 ounces per quart. So I put it just right about seven ounces. I'm not quite a quart here. So you're kind of guesstimating. Um, it's better to go, uh, you don't want to go too short on your hardener. Uh, it's cool in the shop, but it's not super cool. It's 50 degrees, so we're fine. And uh, the seven ounces will really will make this set up. We're not going to sand it till tomorrow anyway, so it'll cure off, flash off, no problem. Let me stir this up real good, and then we'll load the gun. Okay, we're about ready to load the gun. I've mixed this for probably a minute and a half continuously. And I, uh, you got to look at the clock to do this because you, you stir it for what you think is a minute. It's only like, you know, 20 seconds. So it's very important to make sure this is thoroughly mixed. Um, that's catalyst that you just put in there. So you got to make sure that's thoroughly incorporated in. And especially for some of these heavy build primers, they're very viscous. So you got to really stir it up and make sure that gets totally uh, mixed in there. So like usual, I'll just use the stir stick to hold the strainer and then I'll just pour down. This material is very, uh, a lot thicker than, you know, like color would be, so it's not a big deal. And I'm gonna only pour about half in there and then we're gonna let it run out. And while that does that, I'm gonna get my respirator on, turn the fan on and we'll start spraying. Okay, we're ready to spray. So I'm going to just adjust the gun right here on the inside door panel, uh, probably up in here somewhere. We're going to set down a medium wet coat uh, and kind of move kind of fast. And if we have enough, we'll go over the areas that I'm more concerned about and then, uh, and then clean the gun. We'll be done for today. Okay, we'll let those flash off a little bit while we work on the other side. We'll start on the very bottom here, it's really hard to reach.
So I'll take extra care and make sure I get those edges all the way around, probably twice, because they get a lot of sanding and you can really cut the primer off there real fast. Okay, we'll let that flash off. It looks like it's starting to flash off pretty quick, so we'll let it go uh, probably 10 minutes and then we'll put another coat on it uh, if it looks like it. I think I got enough to go everything, over everything once more uh, with a little lighter coat, so it's looking real good right now. Okay, all done. I got the second coat on there. I think I forgot to turn the camera on, not that it matters, just more of the same of the first coat. They look good. Really happy the way they turn it out. The inside panels uh, where we did that work, they look really good. I checked them out while the, the uh, primer was still wet, where you can see as it's shiny, and they looked really good to me. So those are ready for sanding. Got all the way around the edges a couple of times, so there's plenty to sand there. Looked right down here, everything's looking really good. So the next step for these will be to wet and dry sand them with some 400 and then 600. And then uh, if there's any areas, I'll check them out closely and we'll sand those with a little coarser grit, maybe some 320 before we move up to the wet and dry. But all in all, these are just about ready for their final sanding to get some color and clear. Okay, I just want to give you guys a quick close-up view. I don't know how well it's going to come across on the camera, but this is super smooth right here this uh, this primer laid down really nice and flat by reducing it that you know three four five percent it's set up to ten percent on the instructions it really lets it flow out really nice and flat so when you're using it like a top vinyl prime seal coat kind of a thing now we can get in here and sand this with finer sandpaper and just get it uh, to the point where it's ready for color and clear but this is super smooth right here it it, it looks excellent Okay, that's about it for today. That's my project and uh, Jake's project. He was a helper today. Uh, what are you guys working on? Send me three or four more, three or four pictures of what you're working on. Put my project in the subject line. I'll put my email address in the description below. So I'd love to see what you guys are up to and I'd like to post them at the end of these videos so everybody else can see what you guys are doing. Today, we finished uh, getting these doors ready that much closer to color and clear. They're gonna get a final sand, but that's gonna have to wait till the cab is done. I found out just the other day we got four more holes to fill, got some panels on the way, so we're going to weld in some more holes on that truck. I don't know what we're at, maybe 30 by now. Uh, but these are going to set and wait for that to happen, and then we can move on. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Come on, guys, hit that subscribe button, and uh, hit the bell so you get notifications every time I release a new video. <laughs>